is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Seven minutes after nine o'clock, and we're going to start the gardening show without Caroline. Caroline will be here in a little while. She uh, sent me a text message saying that she had something that she needed to get done, and she'll be here. In the meantime, Joe Martone is here to answer She's all planting of something gardening questions. So if you have a question about your lawn, your garden, um, your fertilizer, uh, how to keep the pets out of the garden, maybe that could be something Joe well, can I, answer. I can tell you a little story already. This all morning, right, Bob, good. Bob. Good morning, Joe. How you doing? Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Larry. Good morning. Sorry, Robin gets higher, higher. <laughs> she always. always does. Ladies first. She needs, yeah. It should be. That's the way it should be. Yeah, the, there are many blueberry farmers in the area. Uh huh. And did you know, and oh, I knew I would have a brain interruption there, but anyway, there is a crop, or I should say a flock of birds that migrate with the blueberries where they, where they develop and uh-huh. where they get ready to ripe by the thousands. And they ascend on the blueberries. And that's all they eat is all the blueberry plants. And that is, if you're a farmer with with the crops, then they've got the cannons that go off every 30 seconds. It keeps the birds away. And some have the, the, those, you ever see the socks in front of the, uh, the, Mm, used car lots where they flip in his right, air and it right, looks like a big right, sock. Right. Or they put those around, keeps the birds away. Oh, okay. But if you're a f- small farmer and has just a you know maybe half an acre, an acre, right? It's expensive to keep those birds away. So they're thinking about putting nets over it. Oh, wow. Or things to keep the birds away from the blueberries. And where do they fly from and to? From up north, apparently, and they come down and they follow the crop. Oh, okay. By the by, the thousands, and you can't kill them because they're an endangered species. What are they? What kind of bird? Again, I can't think of the oh, name. Yeah. Of it. If you're if you're listening and you remember the name, uh, Russ or, or Raleigh, give me a call and uh, what's it uh, six two two nine six two two. Correct. Yep. All right, give us a call at six two two nine six two two, and give me the name of that bird. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's a pain, you know and. And that way, if you know, you get that get that bird. But apparently, because logically, if all those thousands of birds are killed, you figure you trap them or or you know kill them, get them with something. No, you can't touch those birds. Can't touch the birds. And he says they don't look extinct. You know, there's thousands. I said, yeah, thousands here, but in the whole screen, the whole world. You know, we have a thousand here, but nowhere else. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. Just like the manatees, like the flamingos. Yeah, the what flamingos. What about the flamingos? Well, there used to be many, many flamingos, and then they mm-hmm. were hunted for the feathers. Oh, really? And the yeah. meat. The feathers and the meat, yeah. Mm-hmm. Flamingo meat? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah, it tastes like chicken. Should I put that because you're about the size of chicken? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, the hunters kind of un- undid them. and. Uh, now, you know why they're, they're, they turn pink, right? Yes. Explain. I forget. Yeah. What they it was. they read Fifty Shades of Grey, and they just <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. They, they became pink. Yeah. No, what what is what makes them turn pink? I think it was a Crayola accident one time. <laughs> oh, I'm not getting a straight answer out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? Am. Sh- I heard it was shrimp. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, that's what I heard. No, I because heard it was shrimp. I go to the uh, Homosassa yeah. little zoo there with the manatees and all that. Yeah, yeah. they have a bunch of. Pink flamingos. Right. I don't see any shrimp around. They're not eating shrimp. So then, so what is the answer then? I don't. That's. I thought you knew the answer. Oh well, I thought that's, that's why I was asking you. Have you ever I, heard that it was because they eat shrimp? No. That's what I heard. Really? Well, yeah, they don't. Well, they shrimp. feed them shrimp just for that. Maybe they. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm pink. I don't eat any shrimp. 
<laughs> on the inside. No, I used to eat a lot of shrimp. You got to peel your back anymore. to see your pink. I don't know. <laughs> so what else do you want to talk about regarding your garden? My garden. Well, like I said, I went with the uh, blueberries right off the top of the top of the chart there, and they're coming into the season in April. So oh, talk okay. about talk about your lawn. It's uh, probably something uh, you, you would know my, about. Yeah, my lawn and the mole. So what is what is your the secret mole, to would, a good lawn? I don't have a good lawn because I can't get the the grass around. They, uh, they call it the caterpillar. It, it grows horizontally, and, and Caroline's laughing like crazy at me right now. <laughs> the grass grows horizontally, or allow, and then it comes up vertically. Uh, St. Augustine? Yeah, yeah. It goes oh. that way. Yeah, yeah. St. Augustine. St. Augustine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I go, that's not grass. I'm a good student. That, yeah, I said, but that's not grass. Grass goes straight up out of the earth. <laughs> not this caterpillar thing that goes all along, 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 then grows up. I heard that that was grass, too. That thing called a palm tree. It's, right? Oh, it's a palm tree? Well, I'm not sure about that. I yeah. think that's a grass, too. Yeah, they're laughing at You can hear them laughing out there. I was her- it was his choice, Caroline. He said he could do the garden <laughs> I show. No, I just a substitute. I, I never say I could do the garden show. Just, we'll do the substitute. Caroline, by the way, just walked in the just, studio. Just walked in the door. Yeah, yeah. You were you were trying. You were trying. So what's the, what's the, with the... Uh, did you hear the blueberry thing you were saying? Uh, what, no, what, actually... What are the birds that eat the blueberries? You know the name of the birds that eat all the blueberries? And they're just, they're extinct, or they're not extinct, they're uh, endangered okay. species. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And oh, they, I'd have to look. That, yeah, that, I, I got one on her. Oh, I'm my. not a big bird person. Well, no, but they're eating all the blueberries, and they follow the crop all the way around. Oh, around okay. By well, that's thousands. A, yeah. By the, thousands. the reason I know that, I was talking to a blueberry farmer this morning, so. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, yeah, no. Um, and he, of course, he said the name of it, but not but, knowing that I'd be sitting here right now. sitting there <laughs> doing, doing the garden show. Well, I, told, I told him, give me a call. One of them usually listens to us in the morning, so I figured he'd call 622-9622 and tell us, <laughs> tell us the, name which of the, what, the name of that bird. Red right, something or something, whatever, bird, I don't know. What Do you was. know what I wanted to ask you? There was, okay. a, there was an article that said a way to keep uh, pets out of your garden. Okay. Coffee grounds was one. I know. I know. Orange peels was one. Uh uh-huh. And but vinegar was one. And I thought, well, doesn't that kill the plants? Vi- yeah, I was going to say vinegar. Vinegar. Yeah, if you spray your plants with vinegar, you're going to let your plants wilt. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Orange, orange peels. Um, I, I know I've had heard people say, you know, don't try to compost orange peels and that that it mm. won't break down and that it that it repels um, uh, yeah. pests that would um, help you break down the compost because they say now there's some of the organic uh, uh, pest control that's using orange oils yeah. you know in that and uh, but, so that but that stuff will be put around right around, right around the, the garden, garden. well, so maybe well I mean in yeah in the garden a little bit but you know there's other repellents out there and they are very sensory is what it is uh, mm. um, ammonia would probably be better than vinegar in the sense that you know, you um, ammonia call? stinks more oh we got a phone call we got a phone yeah that's he said we did oh, we're no, just so. finishing the thought good morning you're on the air. <laughs> yeah 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 good morning hello you're live on WOCA you can talk to us now hello hey hello uh, I think I know what the name of the bird is. Oh, yeah? The bluebird. Is it bluebirds? <laughs> oh, for blueberries. <laughs> it's very <laughs> <been> funny. <laughs> but, uh, I'm not, I'm not real to quick this morning. This morning. I'll test him out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not real quick this morning. I'm going, really? Yeah, the bluebird. Cute. Oh, funny yeah. man. Funny Have man. a good one. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, but I, I heard also uh, human hair. Around, yes, uh, human around. hair. I've heard for uh, doing rabbits and stuff. I'm not sure, but you've got to put almost like a six inch wide band. Around so them. you're going to hit up every barber shop and beauty so? salon around and asking them, "Hey, can we? Can I have your?" Yeah, uh, I want all the clippings. Yeah, and and some of them actually, I think, do actually have a canister. I know where I go, they actually, I think, have like a. Um, a deal where they hair. dust it, they dust it all into this thing and hit the button, and it pulls it up underneath there. Right. So it's like an it built-in vac yeah. system that they can sweep it. So it's collected into a container. You so just take it away. Cause they're just going to yeah. throw it away anyway. Right, right, exactly. But I knew and that so. about deer. Put one up yeah. in Connecticut. I put it put it around my garden. Put it around the garden, company. and probably even on. T- and I've actually heard using human hair as um, weed suppression. Is is another thing that you can do, and and that they, I think in Asia they actually manufacture a weed mat 
type thing for where, like potted plants in Asia. That's why they're all ball headed over there. Okay, <laughs> now we know. It. And yet, maybe no, no more weeds in the in the herbs and the flowers. But putting that around, and it got double double duty, I guess. Again, back to yeah. the grass. Yeah, back to your turf. My yeah. grass, there, yeah. uh, the caterpillar or whatever. Saint Augustine. It, yeah, it, it looks it's, like it's a, a cat- runner. It's a yeah, runner. it's a runner. Yeah. That's not grass to me because I went. What's it? Uh, well, because you're talking about this is Florida grass. That's not grass. Yeah, it's that's, that's grass. like a vine with grass coming up from it. It's, that, it's what, a rhizome. It's a it's an above ground rhizome. Is what. So can I? Uh, would, that machine you pull behind your lawnmower that has those fingers. De- that come, dethatching. Dethatch. Yeah. Now if I de- dethatch all the that. De-thatch, yeah. Yeah. Dethatch all that. that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And pull it out. Clean uh-huh. it out. Clean uh-huh. it all out. Right. What can I put down to get a real looking lawn? Because it looks good from a distance. Right. It looks like a nice lawn right. until you but walk, you walk on it. Up, yeah. It's like, what the f- is this? You know? Well, one, you're never going to have a northern lawn. It, it's not going to happen. I mean, unless you well, really. How do I see it all over the place then? In, um, in it's, the it's, developments. Well, you're, yeah, in the developments. Um, it's St. Augustine. It is well cared for. I mean, what you can do is go through. You can't re, You can't seed over. I forgot to uh, turn my sounds off. You can't overseed St. Augustine. There's no such thing. So you got to pull it all out. So you would either have to pull it all out or take out sections that are the worst, put in either plugs or sod, and um, you can, I guess there's certain areas where you might be able to find sprig, uh, which is little tiny pieces that you would Well, getting put in. back to where. Uh, but if you were to go through and run the, the power rake, even just the power rake through, right. clean out a bunch of that stuff, come back over with some compost or, or something like that where you're just, I, I hate when they say sand. There's nothing in sand that's going to help that grass. Yeah, I know. All it's going to do is cover those rhizomes. But all you're doing is putting, and I'll do it real little for the camera, um, a little tiny Layer. eighth inch of soil or compost or something like that across that and keep it watered. And then using, you know, a little uh, basic fertilizer, turf fertilizer, mm. something like a 1608 or whatever the, the, the breakdown is on. Uh, well, then how do they simple. do it again? Going back. to Well, these. in the in the subdivisions and stuff, they're starting Beautiful. out. With, well, they're starting out with sod. You moved into this property. Yes. So you moved into an existing lawn and you would be looking to rejuvenate it. The slow way is what I'm saying to do. The fast way would be to rip it all out and have sod put down. And that sod would continue growing. Would continue growing. And then with the care of it, uh, would continue to stay nice and thick. Okay. But And we all have, everybody says, but I have such sandy soil. We all do. It's Florida. Nobody oh, yeah. has a much better soil than the other. There's no uh, dirt. No, no. there's no, no true, yeah, what you think of up north as dirt. You can amend those soils before, say if say you were going to go to that expense, because that's not a cheap endeavor to replace your lawn. Right. Yeah, you know, killing everything off, um, lightly rototilling to get off whatever debris you can, then adding, you know, um, a good base, adding a lot of, uh, plenty of compost would get you, you know, this is talking, you're, you're starting to raise the price up on this lawn. Right. Um, but putting a nice layer down and incorporating that lightly into the soil because you think if you put, if you have sand nice and smooth, right. and then you come in and you put, say, a quarter of an inch, a half an inch of, of nice soil, and I'm not saying, you're not hearing me say topsoil because topsoil is not nice soil. Um, We're talking black dirt. Com- compost is what you're after across the top of it. Yeah. And then you lay sod on it. Well, and you water it, water it, water it. 30 days later, guess it's rooted to the ground. It's not rooted in that stuff you plant, put down. It's rooted into the sand underneath it. It went right through it. Yeah, and that's what it's supposed to do. That's why we don't amend just the hole where we plant a shrub. We amend the area. So okay. when you're doing that's why it's just gently uh, working the um, at whatever amendment right in right into the top so that it's feeding it um, and it, improving that soil in that top So to get level. down the grass. The, uh, the grass, the sorry, grass, yeah. The grass that I have there now, mm-hmm. the, I call it the caterpillar. Right, you right. call it? St. Augustine. St. Augustine. Right. To rip that out, mm-hmm. how far down do I have to go? Not really very far. An right. inch? Half inch? Yeah, just, just I mean, pretty much, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, if you were going to put St. Augustine back on top of it, I well, would probably kind of just do get the, rid of it and uh, put it back on top. Uh, I, would just, I would just power rake the thing and, and put it down, leave what's there there. I mean. Power rake it. Okay, I have yeah, that. And I then just add, add, add just some... Um, some compost to the top of the the ground. Get a truckload of compost spread right. out, and and put sod down. 
And put oh, put and, just, and put so that won't grow it, through the sod. Oh, it will, but it's it's the same grass. So it's just why why pull everything out if you're replacing it with the same thing? Well, that's it. Well, that's what I'm yeah, trying to say. Yeah, I want to replace it with the other stuff. Oh, you want a different? Re- like grass. looks like real grass, not what Bermuda caterpillar. or something. I mean, not, none of it's going to look like the grass you had in Carolina. No. So. Those, but like yeah. I said, those subdivisions look like real it's all grass. St. Augustine. It's all St. Augustine. It's still all St. Augustine? St. Augustine or Zoysia. If you get into some of the, I believe some of the newer sections of On Top of the World, and I do know the new sections in the in the villages are going with Zoysia, which is a, a very thin blade leaf, very, very much more, much softer, I guess you'd say, very uh-huh. thin, very short grass. Well, I've seen this. It's thick. Yeah. It's then a that's St. Augustine. Boy. You're talking about two and a half, three inches tall. Right. Yeah. Two and a half but th- that's just a nice, thick, well cared for. Um, but it's thick. thick. Yeah. But it still has that caterpillar thing yep. that under, under, yeah. underneath Underground. all that. Yeah. So yeah. basically, what I need to do is put compost and put some put more some, of it down. Right. So it fills in the dead spots right. and makes it. Yep. Now, what about that stupid mole? The mole? Um, I get rid- moles are eat- moles. The moles are eating insects. Moles are not necessarily. Yeah, but it looks bad. like I got a bunch of pyramids throughout my whole yard. Then you have a gopher. Or a gopher. Then you okay. got a gopher. You're probably going to have to do like the gopher gas or something like that, where it's a. Um, I guess it's a CO2 cartridge or something you, like what, that. You that shoot it in the ground all it, over the place? It's in, you find the active holes in the well, tunnels. You I never can find a hole because I see the, the, the top. The mount, yeah. And you sweep it across, there's no hole there. Well, because you just covered it back up. You kind well, of you you know, a... you have to shovel it and, or knock them all over and see which ones pop back up. Pop back up. That Which ones do they go ahead and re-excavate okay. and open back up? And that's the one. You, and the... the uh, <laughs> Dude, you need some coffee, girl. So, um, that's right. I didn't finish my other tea at home. Um, they have like a, a gopher gas thing. It's like a stick. I'm not sure exactly how it works because the instructions are inside the package. Um, but you open it. Yeah, it's not on the back. It's yeah. Uh, whether you light it and then drop it down in there, and then the gas is just, you know, actually removing the oxygen out of the So it balance. kills them. Yeah. Underground. Hallelujah. Yeah, underground. <laughs> well, I don't care where they yeah, die. Yeah, well, which is better underground than above. I don't you know, care. I'm just tired up. of looking at it. But we got the phones ringing. We got a phone again? Okay. Phone's ringing again. Good morning. You're on the air. No. Good morning. Hey, Good Doug. Good morning, Car- Carol Ann? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm a first-time caller. Okay. Okay. Now, I need the number of the extension agency okay because i'll tell you let me tell you why i need to call them and find out where i can get a pallet of sod okay what kind of sod are you looking for um saint augustine you can you can actually order that through most of your big box home improvement stores um the county extension is probably going to give you a phone number for two or three different sod companies, and you would just pretty much be calling them also. But the, okay. do you have paper and pencil? I'll give you the number to the extension yeah. office. The phone number okay. for the phone number for them is six seven one eight six seven one eight four. Okay, to start over again, I'm sorry. Sure. 671. Correct. 8400. Yes. 0000. Okay. 671 Yes. Okay. All righty? Yeah. Hey, we got a winner. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, the reason why I wanted to do that is it's it's not for me, it's for my son-in-law, and uh, we wanted to get a a, a, a pallet delivered. Sure, sure. And, okay, All thank righty. you so much. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you for yeah, calling. Thanks for calling. Yeah, hey, um, yeah and, the first time caller, but looking for yeah, sod. Looking, looking for sod. And and um and I wish I had the card in my pocket. I think it's at my house, sitting in a bag, um over at the 
uh, Spring Festival over the weekend. Mm. One of the local sod farms was set up there, and they do St. Augustine. They also do, um, what was it they had? They had St. Augustine, Bahia, um, Centipede, St. Augustine, Bahia, Centipede, and Zoysia. So they had the four... So, you know, that, ever, that are, I've I've been by the sod factories. The so, yeah, I've been to one of, one of the sod farms. I've actually oh been my to one of them. Gosh, yeah. I mean, is it looks like a, a a golf course going on steroids? I mean, it's oh yeah, beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they now they go down with their machine, especially mm-hmm. made goes down about one inch and it rolls. Um, it. No, well, it, it depends because like the sod that you find. Um, at the big box stores, are, are usually cut in 16 by 24 inch squares. Oh, or the ones I've seen are rolled. And that's Bahia. Uh, Bahia, they usually roll. They roll. Yeah. But how, how far down do they cut? Um, It depends. Okay, I'm, okay, sure, I'm looking. You're looking at two I'm, inches I'm looking, there. Yeah, yeah, about two inches. Okay, now, now they yeah. take that off. They, they roll it up and put yep. it on the truck yep. for delivery. Right. Now, now the, the earth is there again. Mm-hmm. They have to re- uh, put more, um, more earth down logically, and, they, and I, yeah, my my thought is that yeah, they probably come back through with a layer of compost or something because otherwise they're going to start digging tunnels. Uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> down yeah. through, and then with something like Bahia, I'm not sure if they uh, do that vegetatively, like Saint Augustine, Saint Augustine is, or if they come through with seed. Uh-huh. And reseed on the behavior. Uh, explain what the first part said. Was. Uh, uh, Vegetative? Vegetative, vegetatively, St. Augustine is grown vegetatively. Which so means? they leave, it's, it's by plant material, it's not seed. So they leave a piece of the root uh-huh. of that runner in there. Um, and they leave, actually leave like a space that they'll take out that 16 um, wide. Is it no twenty four wide down the line? But then they're leaving a gap before they do the next run, so okay. they so that that next grass will grow and fill back in. So once they once they take that that row out, mm-hmm. then they've got a period that has to grow over again, and it has to grow back. So it's again. another yeah. year before yeah. they can do it. In that section, pro- or yeah, probably. So okay. Yeah, probably. Cool. Yeah, it, it's it's an interesting. It is pretty interesting. I was I did go to the sod farm one time. I forget was getting sod. I think with a friend or something. Or or no, it was probably a field trip with master gardeners. Yeah. Uh, when I first became a master gardener, but that this one and I can't remember the name of them. But if if the gentleman calls over, they'll probably have their card handy because yeah. they were there. Um, and their prices were reasonable, and they were you know the company itself was local here out of Ocala, so it's not oh, it's a local coming company. from yeah yeah. I've seen it in in North Carolina where they've done oh it. yeah. Yeah, and all the grasses that are grown that are here are coming from here. Yeah. Usually, yeah, they're yeah. coming from your central Florida area. Usually, you don't really want that muck uh, sod because it's it's a different soil, and so it's you know it doesn't always do as well. Oh, so, so if you get you, the local, you when it, they start getting it, you know, some of the muck from up north it, down here. Yeah, if they're getting it from like Georgia, you know, because St. Augustine's growing up in, into Georgia, the kinds that we use here too. So uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, most of the ones, the ones that come to to the store I'm I'm at, and I probably most of the low store are coming out of I think Fort Myers, uh, or over in that area over there. So they, you know, grow sod all over. Who'd have thought grass would have been a commodity? I mean, well, the other water guy, would have been a commodity. I don't that's, know that that's ever. true. That's you know, one true. observation I, that I've had about the soil I wanted mm-hmm. to mention um, before we go to the break. Uh, the newer the property, the more sandy it is. Like when I lived in Bellevue, I was on an old piece of property yeah. that's been there hundreds of years. Right, right. And it wasn't sandy when you, at all. Right, was, when you it got to. It was to, more like dirt. Because of the leaf litter that falls yeah, down and yeah, breaks down yeah. naturally. Right. When they build a house, first they, they, they scrape off the soil. They bring in builder sand and level the property, nah. build a house, plan it. So, yeah, it's pretty sandy. So, All right, we'll be right back. If you yep. would like to call into the show, the number is 622-9622. Carol Ann Baldwin and Joe Martone are here. We'll be right back. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. An Army captain from Madison, Illinois, is among the eight Americans and 157 people killed in Sunday's plane crash in Ethiopia. Antoine Lewis was 40 years old. 
in which President Sheila Chalmers Curran says he grew up here, went to school here, elementary school here, went to high school here. This is his home. Uh, this will always be his home, and um, truly, he will be missed. Two brothers from California were also on that flight. More airlines have grounded the kind of plane involved. The Boeing 737 Max 8. It's the second crash in five months. Police in Temple, Texas, are looking for whoever threw a football-sized rock off an overpass, killing a woman riding in her car with her boyfriend and three kids. Keila Flores' brother Luis calls her. A good mother. I'll always remember her. And I'll always love her to the day I die. She was killed Saturday night on Interstate 35, heading home to Waco from Austin, Texas. This is Fox News. Napa know-how. Chase Elliott here letting you know that when you spend $25 a Napa this month, you get a free Chase Elliott racing hat. Need a set of brakes? How about a new battery? Both are hat-worthy. Replacing an air filter, then adding on wiper blades and headlamps just to break $25? That works, too. Go get your free Chase Elliott hat today. Quality parts, helpful people, free hats. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, while supplies last. Offer ends 3 31 19 Pros know getting the next job means doing this one right. Lowe's is here to help with brands you need to power through any job. Like Hitachi, soon to be known as Matabo HPT. New name, same tools, same warranty. Stop in today and save up to 25% off select Hitachi tools. And save yourself some time. Order ahead at Lowe'sForPros.com and pick up your order in store. For tools you can trust to get the job done right. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offer valid through 317. See store for details, U.S. only. Folks, R.L. here for Dairy Queen Silver Springs. We want to thank Marion County for 45 years of loyalty. We love this wonderful community. So come on down to Dairy Queen Silver Springs and get some of our great food and ice cream. We have a number of great meal deals that include dessert at a better price than anyone in the industry. Our products are made fresh to order just for you. Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. Hey, I didn't know it rained last night. Oh, it, it didn't. Why do you say that? Because little Johnny's in the backyard playing in that big mud puddle. Did you leave the hose on? No. The neighbor borrowed it yesterday. Wait, is that the side where the septic... Johnny, came? get out of there! Having septic problems? At Mike Scott Plumbing, we can make those septic worries disappear. We can pump your septic tank, repair your drain field, and, if needed, even install a whole new system. At Mike Scott Plumbing, we don't take crap from anyone. We take it from everyone. 237-2888. Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. You do your best to protect your loved ones, and while you may keep a fresh battery in your smoke detector and have a reliable home security system, there is a whole different type of protection you may be missing. A life insurance policy from Auto Owners Insurance is a way to safeguard your loved ones now and in the future. Meet with your local independent agent and secure a policy today to protect their tomorrows. Visit George Mangan Insurance in Ocala today at mangininsurance.com. Experience the largest aerospace expo in the South as Sun and Fun returns to the skies of Lakeland April 2nd through 7th. It's not just an air show, it's everything aviation. Walk among hundreds of aircraft, browse over 500 exhibits and activities, then be amazed at daily air shows with breathtaking aerobatic flights by the world's top pilots featuring the U.S. Navy Blue Angels. See dozens of mighty warbirds fly from vintage bombers to modern fighter jets and feel the heat of a 1,000-foot wall of fire. Florida residents buy a ticket for Saturday April 6th and get Sunday, April 7th for free. Come all day Saturday and stay for the night air show with its amazing star dance spectacular drone light show, aerobatic flyers, plus a fireworks display. Then return Sunday for an additional show. That's three shows for the price of one. Make plans now to bring the whole family and experience the past, present, and future of aviation at the Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Expo. Children under 10 free. For additional ticket information and show schedules, visit us at flysnf.org. 25 minutes before 10 o'clock, 71 degrees. Looks like we got partly cloudy skies most of today. There was no mention of rain, even though it looks like it might rain, but that's uh, not the, the weatherman's not agreeing with that. 76 is the high, 58 is the low tonight. Tomorrow, 80 degrees with a 20% chance of rain. Uh, 85 on Thursday with, again, a 20% chance. Friday... 84, again, 20%. And then the weekend is when it goes up to 30, 40, and 50 on Monday, percent chance of rain. Let's return now to Carol Ann Baldwin. If you have a question for Carol Ann, you are invited to call. The number is 622-9622, and you have a call. Great. Good morning. Thank, good morning. Thank you for calling. Uh, good morning. This is Sunny Cole. Yeah. 
Good morning. Uh, I was out uh, yesterday, um, practically the whole day, uh, just going around spraying weeds mm -hmm. and uh, so the other one area I have in the backyard. I don't want anything growing there because it has a whole covered with you know that mulch, uh, the red rock mulch. Okay. Okay. But anyway, uh, looking at the, I don't have grass. Oh. <laughs> at this last uh, cold spot here, my, everything is dead, really, when the grass, and I'm, I'm looking and I'm walking on it, and you just disturb it a little bit. You can look, look right down to the soil. Wow, that's, that's pretty bad, because I didn't think we really had too much really bad cold, you know, not bad cold weather, uh, that last cold spell, what happened um, was it had been so warm that things were trying to grow, and so when the cold oh, yeah. came, it did some damage. Um, just give it some time. I'm, it's going to, um, just some water. We're not getting any rain yet, so, you know, turn the irrigation on. I think that this time of year, we are now allowed to bump it up to two times a week now that uh, the time change occurred, yeah. um, and so so you might want to if you're not running irrigation, but you don't you don't have a system, do you? you no. <laughs> no. So well, well, you might you might want to do you know get you know put the sprinkler out just to to encourage that to come back up. Um, you know now that it's getting a little warmer, I think the, the we don't really have any rain like Larry said in the forecast here. Um, you know, in the near future, not anything significant. So to bring those grasses back up, you might want to have to turn some water on. And uh, the other thing is, I guess I have what they call centipede. They send out these long runners. You can see this uh, now. But, but, the, the, there's no grass. Okay. You can see the runners and everything. Okay, but I mean, you had you had centipede grass to begin with. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's a, I mean, that's a low maintenance. That's usually a low maintenance lawn. Doesn't like a lot of fertilizer. Usually a fairly tough lawn. Um, you might want to come across the top of it with some a little bit of compost, a little layer across there, and just uh, cover those rhizomes. Cover that ro runner over a little bit. You don't want to cover it a lot. Just a, just a little bit so that it's got contact with soil, a little bit of rain or a little bit of water to it. And, um, and you know, centipede doesn't like a lot of fertilizer. So I probably wouldn't, um, at this time yet, put any fertilizer down on a centipede lawn. No, usually what I do is, uh, you know, when the, after the freezes and everything mm -hmm. and the grass is starting to grow, you know, uh, I put down a, uh, a one-time, well, I, it's like a one-time feed for me. It's uh, mm -hmm. fertilizer. It has some iron in it. Right, right. You probably, you probably know the brand. Sure. But unless I can say it on air. Oh, we don't, I, we don't mind. Yeah. It's at uh, Lesco. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and just probably uh, a simple 1608 with iron in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that usually does it for the whole year. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. For, for, for a centipede lawn, yes. That, that would be probably it. If you wanted something later in the season, something like the um, Milorganite or that kind of, that kind of product, because I know there's now um, another brand or two on the market that's primarily the same thing. You know, it's... Um, right. you know, it, with with the, uh, well, with the one really, it's Milwaukee. Really, uh, you know, you, you look at it, it's uh, a nice, nice shade of brown. I mean, they're not mold, but when right. you get out there, and uh, the the weeds are are thriving. They're trying, right? They're they're That's coming through, right? Yesterday, right? Yeah, they're I'm coming good. through because the lawn is is thin right now. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that was my uh, question there. Yeah. And uh, like I said, the only reason why I think it's centipede is it has these long runners. Well, but it's uh, centipede is a short-bladed grass um, yeah. that if you use fertilizer on it, a lot of nitrogen, it will actually turn yellow uh, because it doesn't like the nitrogen fertilizers. Um, it's... Um, but... With centipede, because St. Augustine has a runner also, but it's a wide blade, darker green, right. reacts well to nitrogen. Um, yeah, my neighbor has that. And okay. I, have a, I, I hate that stuff because right. it, it just uh, it's very intrusive. It's coming across the you know, naturally the property line because right. it doesn't know property lines. Sure, and, uh, yeah, the grass doesn't read, yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, anyway, that's a pain in the neck to yeah. get up. Sure, sure. And you might try, you might, because you can get seed for centipede also. You might want to go ahead, and this would not be a bad time of year, to um, go ahead and, and just hop dress with a little right. bit of seed and just, you know, encourage that grass to come back a little bit thicker, um, you know, so that it's going to choke those weeds out. And uh, how about aeration? I have a small aerator um, with uh, concrete blocks on. Right. You might do that before you put some seed down. And then, you know, I wouldn't do it if you're not going to water and do the other stuff. I don't think that at this time of year we're not getting rain. So yeah. aeration is not going to really do you much, uh, much good. But if you were going to get some compost uh, and get some seed and be able to turn the sprinklers on a little bit, um, you know, I would go ahead and aerate and then get that process going, and that way your grass will be uh, starting to fill in and clean up, you know, and, and get going for the uh, late later spring and summer months. Uh, well, thank you very much for the advice, yeah, and uh, thank you for being on the air, and thank you, WOCA, for putting Carolyn on the air. <laughs> All right, Have thank a great you. day, everybody. Thank you. Yep, thanks for being a listener. <laughs> yeah, it goes, uh, it's, it's worth repeating that Carolyn sure. does this as a volunteer, so yeah. thank you for doing that. And, oh, my uh, pleasure. Also, Carolyn has a Facebook page that is a companion piece to right. the radio show. Right, It's called In the Garden. I noticed somebody else has an In the Garden page now. Have you seen oh, this? Oh, no, I haven't. In Sanibel Island. Oh. I know, so you got to make sure you find the one with the little garden gnome in it. <laughs> right, right, or the one, I don't know, yeah, does mine have a, happen to mention W? Or I don't. Not. I don't know, but but yeah. I but I wanted to. Um, well, let's take a phone call first, and then I want okay. to tell you something that I put on your page. Right. Go, good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Carol Ann. Yeah. I guess the subject of the day is grass, and I'm ah, in mourning right now because of oh. this hot weather we've been having. My rye grass is on its deathbed. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And uh, I, I, I cut uh, I cut it uh, yesterday uh, down pretty far. Now I, I know it's too early to put my seed for bahia, bahia grass down mm -hmm. now. Uh, when when would be the appropriate time to do that? Actually, I would just give it another few weeks. Say the first of April. Okay. Yeah, that won't that won't be too early because uh, it's it's staying. We're staying consi uh, consistent consistently. Boy, I can't talk today. <laughs> consistently warm. Um, now we're not getting rain, so that just makes you know makes it a little harder unless you're ready to to put the garden hoses out and and water it. Yeah. Well, I, I've got a sprinkling system, so oh, I'm fine. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're, we're getting we're getting a light rain or a drizzle, as they would call it, yeah. right now here in Silver Springs. Yeah, I had a little bit this morning. It not an, it's not going to be enough to be measurable or anything today. Uh, now, when I put the seed over, what was the rye grass? Uh, mm -hmm. I'll cut the grass real short, and, and then uh, uh, just kind of like. Uh, spread it around um just make sure you don't cut it you know don't don't scalp your lawn because you have grass underneath there that's going right. to come up and continue growing you're just supplementing that existing grass so with the you know with the warm weather coming you got the rye grass the rye grass whatever you've mowed today will be beginning to break down uh feeding the lawn and when you put the seed down, put it if you can put it in your spreader. If you've got one of them little whirly gig kind that are handheld, do it that way. Kind of rake it. You just need it to get down to the soil, or yeah. you can come back across and put uh, a light layer of a compost across it, and then water it well. And you just have to water it until it starts to germinate, and then you can slow back on the watering. Um, but then you'll still need to water supplementally to get it up and growing. Um, you know, so that you don't lose it because here I'm growing and now you cut my water supply off. Yeah, I, I'm very happy with the ryegrass that I use in the wintertime. Yeah. I, I put it in certain spots in my backyard for the dogs so they always have grass uh, right. to play around in during the winter. Right. And, and, and uh, boy, let me tell you, though, you get a couple of weeks of 80-plus degrees, and uh, it, that, that grass does not like hot weather. <laughs> no, it does not. About the only places it might be looking good still is probably underneath some shade trees. That's exactly yeah. right, and yeah. it looks good there, but that's the only spot. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. So because because that's dying off naturally, go ahead and mow, but don't mow the grass any shorter than what you would mow your bahia. You know, keep okay. that. Yeah, keep don't don't go any lower than that because that's harming the bahia that still yeah. hasn't come up out of its dormancy yet. Um, and like I said, just put some seed down. Um, I, I'd say give it, you know, give it till the first of April. You know, I wouldn't wait yeah. too long because uh, it's warm. It's warm enough. 
if by chance, probably unusual, never probably will happen, but if you got your seed down, and let's say it is almost April, and all of a sudden you get a hard freeze, does that knock the seed out? It could, um, you know, a yeah. hard freeze especially, because if you put it down, um, Bahia can take up to like three weeks to germinate, let's say, or four weeks, up to like 28 days to germinate. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like you say, the odds of a, odds of a hard freeze happening f- from here forward are probably you know zero percent or one percent chance to have a frost could still happen but you think our last expected frost date is this friday so i i'm not expecting i we don't see anything in the forecast i think there's some some cooler weather coming but it's actually going to make it seasonal more season yeah we're 87 yesterday was uh 10 degrees above what we should have been yeah, we we had a couple of frosty mornings this winter, but never never one hard freeze. No, not at all. no, I don't think we've had any hard freezes. I mean, this last one they did call for a freeze warning, but it wasn't a hard freeze. It was one of those kind of things that probably did take a nip on some things that were uh, newly sprouting. You know, that okay. little tender stuff, but nothing else like that. All right. Well, I'm going to run over and get some of my my, my grass seed and yeah. uh, and a day or two. Uh, get out there and spread it and uh, right. water it and uh, do the do the the dance, do, do the, the rain thing. dance and the Indian dance and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And hope, hope it comes up nice. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm okay. Sure, it will. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Hugh. Have Thank a good you. Day. Bye. If you would like to call in, the uh, phone line is open and the number is six two two nine six two two. Caroline is here to answer your questions about your lawns, your gardens, uh, okay. your trees. Yeah. And don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, there's a Facebook page. Right. And, and I used your Facebook page to so that I could pictures, show yeah. you with pictures tree. my apple tree. Right. Now, so I put four pictures on there. Right. One, one shows the top, which mm-hmm. got a little bunch has of little, little new and leaves. It looked like some new growth at the bottom. One shows the bottom, which yeah. also has some new leaves, yeah. which is kind of crazy. I don't know why no, that that's, is. Uh, no, that's okay. And, I if, mean, and if you look at the whole picture, you see there's nothing between the top and the bottom, just a big old just, stem. Just a trunk. And then yeah. a close-up of that stem shows these little nubs, and that's what I wanted to ask you about. Let me see. My pictures are finally coming up here. Oh, you know what it is? I never turn the Wi-Fi on here. Will those we will go. those little nubs turn into branches or leaves they, or something? Uh, they they may be new leaf area. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I'm seeing those. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's like new growth can be new growth. Yeah, don't go through there and scratch them off because that's no, where new I wouldn't do that. Yeah. No, but that, yeah, that's yeah. You may be going to get some branching out of that. Uh, yeah, you know, this year. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's start to look like a tree instead of right, a plant. Right. Instead of yeah, instead of just a stick with a little fuzz on top. <laughs> but no, it's right. I was afraid right. I killed it to be honest. Yeah, with I you. know, but that yeah, the new growth at the bottom, just because it's feeding the tree right now, I probably wouldn't worry about it. But we would probably take that off. Those bottom ones? Yeah. Oh, because that... it's not an apple bush; it's an apple tree. Right, right. And those are going; those are coming up from the bottom. What we would call um, either water shoots or sprouts, you uh-huh, know, the uh-huh. you know, root sprouts. So when you say they're feeding the tree, they because the green leaves are are giving feeding, it what it are, needs. Are, are feeding ah, it okay. at the same time. Um, but you might, you know, I mean. I wouldn't let them get real big on there. Oh, ah, okay. Because then, okay. you know, then they're a woody stem to take off. I'd probably take them off. What would happen if I didn't take you'd them have, off? You'd have an apple bush. Apple bush? Yeah, they and they may take a little energy later. Ah, to actually from make... That you, right, uh-huh. from there. Huh, okay. So... Yeah, you hmm. want the tree to get some height to it. Before. First time I ever grew anything from a seed, it's other than maybe when well. I was a kid. I, yeah, and I meant actually, and again, I, I keep meaning what I mean to do and what I get done is two different things. <laughs> yes, that's, that's everybody. That's everybody, yeah. One of these days I'll get another picture. I'll get it posted on there on my tree. All right, so the article, let me find the article. It was yeah. in uh, Reader's Digest, and it was, it was about um, keeping pets away from... Right. Uh, hold on. From, from plants and from your, your plants. Yeah, and, I, right. and I thought to myself that a lot of this looks like it's uh, scary for... Here it is. Five ways to keep cats and dogs away from your garden. Mm-hmm. And I'll just go through real quickly. It right. says coffee grounds, mothballs, oranges... Tape and vinegar. Okay. We'll, tape. we'll go uh, orange, orange, orange. Tape would be houseplants. You could take and crinkle it, get some tape and ball it. Take and unspool a roll of tape and, bu- and put it in the top of the plant. The cat is not going to want to go in Oh, there. really? And that's where that is. You could also add to that plastic forks. 
and take and just poke plastic forks in your potted plants. If you've got a cat or something oh, like that okay. that keeps trying to get up in there, it's not going to be happy to try to get up in there with plastic forks sticking okay, up. Okay. Okay. Um, mothballs, no. Yeah. No. no I've no, always no, heard mothballs no, is not no, a good no, idea no, for no, a garden. No. Mothballs are not to be used outside. Mothballs are to be used in closets, in closed totes, in you know the moth the the stored clothing. Mm -hmm. It's not for outdoor pets or pests. You know, it, they're not they're not labeled as such. Mothballs are toxic. Yeah, yeah. I they're always thought that too. They're not good for you. They're not good for your landscape. Do not put them outside. They're not labeled for use outside. Don't do it. Okay? I think I, I think I was clear. So this was a Reader's Digest That's, article. Yeah. I was a little and, surprised, and so, and be, right? Well, because there's no research on these. Yeah. This is just home remedy. Me, kind of stuff. Human hair, we went through, was human hair, I think, was one of them. You but can human hair's hair not even on the list. On that list. Okay, human hair wasn't. But uh, And whether or not it works well, I'm not sure. You're looking at a six-inch wide band around the garden area to try to, my understanding, it was for bunnies. Joe had mentioned uh, for deer. Um which you know I've, I've heard of it working the repellents you find on the market are, are sensory they're not going to hurt the animal that comes up your cat your dog the squirrels the rabbits the yeah whatever um they stink is what it is it's garlic it's capsaicin which is what makes hot peppers hot uh -huh, or hot chilies uh -huh. hot um what do they call it putrid solids of egg of eggs which is a sulfur smell wow. um those kind of things that you know when you first put it out you're going whoa this stinks after a little while you won't smell it apparently the animals will continue to smell it and would be you know warded off how long they last especially when we begin to get our rains and with the heat and things like that for us i couldn't tell you but again the granulated you're going to have to put a continuous band around it's not just shake a little here shake a little there and you think because whoa that stuff stinks i wouldn't i don't want to go near it um no they'll walk right through the middle of it <laughs> you know, it doesn't smell right here where i walked so um and the spraying on don't i wouldn't spray any of the liquid spray on ones onto anything i was going to eat because i'm not sure if it will wash ah, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know and you'd have this stinky thing you're carrying into the home so um you know there are repellents on the market you may even try to plant other plants that are just not palatable to them but that list is probably kind of short oh really you know, on that but you could do you know you could do garlic you, you could get if garlic's not necessarily that cheap but maybe you could find you know the the powdered garlic uh -huh. you know in the dollar tree or something like that and and make yourself up something like with that with hot pepper uh, what have you what have things. you used that actually works um when i used to keep a bird feeder i did um the hot pepper, the you know, I, I do the crushed red pepper kind of thing or the chili powder right. into the bird seed. I mean, you had to clean and why actually, because it keep the squirrels from. Oh, I see. It. The birds yeah, still eat birds, it though. Birds still eat it. Birds like hot stuff because they can't taste it. Oh, okay. Their okay. tongue is not. Their mouth is not wet. They don't have the, oh, the okay. moist mucous membranes in the mouth that squirrels and mammals and things like that have. Um, so they can eat it without a problem. But the um, Squirrels don't like it. So that that did seem to work. <laughs> Anything else, I really haven't. If you're doing for, if it's rabbits, do, do you fence them out. You just got to have something that's going to be I would over about rabbits. 18 I'd inches. love to see rabbits well, outside. The, the rab but you don't want them to eat your flowers <laughs> or your vegetables. I'd be okay. You know, on, you know fence them out. Your fence has got to have small enough, uh, s small spacing between so they don't wiggle through because yeah. maybe bunnies can fit through all kinds of little spaces and uh, high enough. So it needs to be at least 18 inches high. So a little tiny one foot stone border around isn't gonna do it. If you have pots, make sure they're tall enough or put them up on something to raise them up high mm. enough. Those kind of things work. Um, one time I had gotten a, from one a, a manufacturer sent it, uh, uh, a mosquito repellent kind of thing that was a granulated, which would probably works wonders in states that don't get four inches of rain at a time in the summer you know when our mosquitoes are so horrible because mm -hmm. uh, i would i would put it around where my car because i used to get attacked getting in and out of my car 
by mosquitoes. By mosquitoes, yeah. So what it is it? Real bad, and I'd put it out there, and it'd be. It would work for a, a while, for a little bit, but it would rain, and then it would be gone. So I know it's a part of a garden, although it's not gardening. It's the little pond, and and you brought Retention up the mosquitoes. Areas, yeah. So how do you um, kill? There was something you mentioned a long time ago that there's a way oh, to kill can, the larva. Uh, yeah, if you have yeah, right, if you have a pond or water feature that the water doesn't move a lot, or you don't have fish in that's controlling larvae, uh, or if it's a retention pond near you. Um, they they have products out on the market. Some of them are called uh, mosquito pellets or mosquito dunks. They are Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a naturally occurring bacterium, living bacterium. But if you have it's fish, a, they will eat the larvae? Yeah, fish will eat the larvae. Okay. Yeah, they, they'll, yeah, you throw a couple of, even guppies will, will you know, take care of them. You don't have to have great big koi fish or mm. anything like that. Um, just a, just a couple fish in the in a pond, and they'll keep it. Uh, but the but the BT type stuff, you can put that in there. It only attacks um, mosquito larvae. So you know, you're set. It's not going to hurt if you have if your pets eat out of it, you know, or drink out of it. So you got a, a a rain barrel, and maybe you still get even with screen on it, you still get a few mosquitoes because it's surprising how yeah you know, mosquitoes can get through such fine areas. Um, you can put a little bit of that in that in there, and it's not going to hurt your plants when you water your plants with it later. So you know, there's naturally occurring ways of doing you know to take care of the mosquitoes, and we are coming back into mosquito season this year, and we all know that you know we have what um, they added. What was that one out of um, the Zika virus, you know, is one that apparently, you know, can happen here in Florida um, with mosquitoes. You got West Nile, you got the Eastern Equine, you've got all kinds of different mosquito-borne um, dis- illnesses that can happen yeah, to not yeah. just not just horses, but people too. Yes. And and also the mosquitoes are what carries the heartworm uh, yes, problem to, to yes. our pets. So controlling mosquitoes is very important in our landscapes and and you know watching that you you know try to limit your exposure to them uh, whether or not you're using and, repellents and things am like I that. right in guessing that mosquito is not an invasive species that they actually uh, are natural uh, they well some of them may I mean they we nobody brought them in and you know kind of thing but there they probably are, are of, some that that you know may have blown here during a hurricane uh, at okay. some point or something like that but but anyway there's yeah. a ton of them up in uh well, lots of places, I'm yeah. sure, but the you know Devil's Mill Hopper in Gainesville. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, because you're oh, down my in. Gosh. Right, you're down in. If you go down there, underground. make sure you have, have your repellent, mosquito yeah. repellent on. And and just thinking of the other repellents, a lot of folks and I've had people because they're planting their gardens are getting out in the yard because now the days are longer. Yay! Mm-hmm. Um, and they're wanting to put naturally, you know, re- mosquito repellent plants in lemongrass. Um, uh, lavender, th- th- things like that. Just realize, just like your citronella candle does about a 15 foot by 15 foot area, that's what your plants are going to do. They're not going to, you're not going to plant a lemongrass on, on three corners of the backyard and expect that, uh, you know, 60 by 60 by 60 backyard to be protected from mosquitoes no it's going to protect about 15 feet around that that's area. it huh? right so on your patio putting putting a couple plants and some planters up on a patio where you entertain uh is, is a great idea or maybe a small garden near there that'll help keep them away from those areas but so will while you're entertaining a fan <laughs> well, that's yeah. a, that's a pretty out, smart bring, idea. Bring out the pedestal fan, or there are some actual outdoor rated fans. They have those things you, you hang on get. your belt with and a fan. A they work. Well, those ones, the little ones that you clip on your belt with yeah. the repellent in them, they work if you're sitting and reading. Oh, okay, okay. But they're not going to do if you're out and you're cooking and you're throwing the ball with the kids uh-huh. and you're chasing them around because the the scent keeps leaving you behind. You know, you keep leaving it behind. Ah, okay, so. all right. Well, good to see you. I'm glad and you're feeling better. You. Everything's going no, good. No crutches today. No crutches today. I'm going to put my tape back on. But Doc said I'm doing well. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, Pete. my pleasure. Your listeners love this. I, I must say that when Robin and I do the first Friday art walk, your yes. show comes up quite frequently from the people who stop by and 
and say hi. Uh, yeah, they, cool. they love listening. Um, if you want to uh, keep in touch with Caroline, you can use Facebook. Go to her In the Garden page. It's yep. the one with the garden gnome. It's not the one from Sanibel Island. Right. Ours is from Ocala. I'm sure she's a nice lady, but this is the better one. <laughs> this is ours. One. This is ours. <laughs> Have a great day, right. everybody. Thank you, Caroline. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. Unlike some other Democrats in Congress, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says trying to impeach President Trump isn't worth it. I just don't believe in it. They wanted me to impeach President Bush for the Iraq war. 